Yellowstone supervolcano eruption. How overdue is the supervolcano to erupt? And is the caldera active? Well, we know it's active. The caldera is sinking as the Norris Geyser Basin, which is in the caldera, is rising. Now, this is uh, by Cat Hops on Express UK. Yellowstone supervolcano was hit by 81 earthquakes last month, including a swarm of 17 quakes in one day alone. How overdue is the volcano for an eruption, and is the caldera active? Volcanic hotspot is under Yellowstone. It was shaken by 81 earthquakes in February across the U.S. National Park, as detected by University of Utah seismograph stations. They're responsible for following monitoring what happens in Yellowstone. And the United States Geological Survey, USGS, said earthquakes of different sizes were reported across the region. Now, different sizes reported, but there were hundred. there are hundreds that actually take place, and they're shown in the monitors, in the seismographs. There's a lot more that uh, are recorded than are reported. The largest one reported was 3.1 magnitude, Located 14 miles south of Montana, that was February 16 at 2.22 local time, 2.22 p.m., and the strongest earthquake of a swarm of 17 measured magnitude 1.7, located 5 miles north of Montana. And the USGS said that the seismic activity was nothing to worry about. They say earthquake swarms like these are common and account for about 50% of the total seismicity in Yellowstone. Now, how overdue is Yellowstone for an eruption? And is the caldera active? Well, we know that the caldera is active. Now, there have been various uh, earthquakes. Yellowstone eruption, we know, would kill thousands of people and destroy entire cities, even disrupting entire continents if it was a major eruption. When Yellowstone last erupted 630,000 years ago, the supervolcano spewed 240 cubic miles of ash and rock into the air. And uh, we've had a smaller eruption 70,000 years ago. They claim that they've had about 50 eruptions of volcanic nature, and about uh, it erupts about every 6,000 years. Recent activity has seen the caldera, the cauldron-like crater that forms following a major volcanic eruption, sinking and it's continuing at the present time. It's deforming, sinking. While the Yellowstone National Park says the subsidence correlates with earthquake activity, it does not mean an eruption is imminent. The park says Yellowstone will probably erupt again, but not for at least thousands of years. An eruption is impossible to stop and beyond the control of human ability, as we know. The type of activity would be most commonly expected would be lava flows. USGS says there have been no significant changes in Yellowstone surface deformation recently. In its latest update, the scientific agency wrote, ground subsidence of Yellowstone caldera continues as it has since 2015 at a rate of a few millimeters every month. In the area of Norris Geyser Basin, that's where we have the steamboat geyser, GPS data indicate no vertical deformation. The area has shown little net change since October of 2018. And the volcano's alert level is currently set at normal. The park, which celebrates its 147th birthday on March 1st, it celebrated it, said there were four water eruptions of Steamboat Geyser last month, the 1st, 8th, 16th, the 28th, and there has been a couple this month as well. Now, Steamboat is the world's largest, tallest active geyser, with eruption levels shooting up to 300 feet high. USGS says discharge measured at the Tantalus Steam Gauge suggests that these eruptions may have been smaller than past events of the current sequence, which started March 2018, although it's difficult to confirm this with, without the direct observations. Now, besides what USGS has claimed, we do have Dr. Michio Kaku, professor at City University in New York, stating 
that we had we have to forget the mascot of Yellowstone being Yogi Bear, but we have to remember that there's a sleeping Godzilla underneath Yellowstone waiting to tear the guts out of the United States when it does erupt. And also, we've been told that is, there is a hot spot forcing magma to rise below Yellowstone supervolcano because it sits on a hot spot deep in the Earth's crust it's causing the magma to rise to the surface below Yellowstone National Park. And this was revealed by geologists during a documentary. Yellowstone volcano, as we know, erupted 2.1 million years ago, 1.2 million years ago, and 640,000 years ago. With this, those were the major eruptions, with the 70,000 years ago being the smaller one. Volcanoes typically erupt when molten rock, known as magma, rises to the surface following the Earth's mantle melting due to tectonic plates shifting. Now, uh, however, geologists have identified the spot between deep below Yellowstone National Park is constantly heating the Earth's crust, forming magma and forcing it to rise. Professor Bill McGuire from the Benfield Hazard Research Center, University College London, stated how Yellowstone is different to other volcanoes around the world. He said this back in 2011. He said many of the world's volcanoes are local, located around rigid tectonic plates that make up the outer part of the planet. But Yellowstone is a little different. He says Yellowstone is sitting above what we refer to as a hot spot. And you may have, what you have is hot materials from Earth's mantle coming up and hitting Earth's crust and melting it. Uh, the documentary went on to explain, revealing how this hot spot continuously poses a threat. And in detail, a hot spot is a fixed point deep in the Earth's interior that the American plate slowly moves. It melts the overlying crust, which creates a huge chamber of molten rock, and it eventually forces up to create a supervolcano. Scientists have previously revealed that should an earthquake occur, it could take less than two weeks before a catastrophic reaction is triggered there. The last eruption, as we know, of Yellowstone produced 2,500 times more volcanic material than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens volcano in, in Washington state. And that created an eruptive column so colossal that it covered around 60% of the US in a thick layer of ash. Now, should the same thing happen again, a mixture of ash, lava, blebs, and uh, superheated gas exceeding temperatures of 1,000 degrees Celsius could move at speeds of up to 300 miles an hour. And if the pyroclastic flow hits anyone, they would possibly die within seconds as the air could heat up to around 300 degrees Celsius, he says. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.